in Chinese, dim sum literally means porn to your heart. Dim is porn, sum is your heart. Because when you order dim sum in a Chinese dim sum restaurant, all you have to do is point to the dishes you want. It's like your heart's delight. If you don't know what it is, ah, don't point. You might end up having braised ah, chicken feet that you might not like. There is no menu, just a little card. The ladies or the men will push the card around, just come around the whole restaurant filled with all the little dishes, whether it's a little bamboo steamer, whether it's in bamboo or stainless steel. You just pick whatever you want. Now, that is what I call ordering a la carte. A dim sum restaurant is also often also called a tea house. Here is a classic dish that you can find in some of the dim sum restaurants and many of the tea houses. And you can make it home very easily, steamed pearl ball. Here, this is the pearl. I have some sweet rice or glutinous rice or short grain rice. You can use either one because they, when they steam, they stick here. This is the raw one. And then you soak them in water for approximately overnight or even just two or three hours until they are more or less rehydrated. So they're nice and absorb enough water. When you steam them, it doesn't take too long to do. And then you set it aside and then you are going to get the feeling. I have some ground meat here. Look at that. You can use beef, chicken, turkey, beef, pork, any ground meat would do. Then I have some Sichuan pickle, water chestnut chopped, green onion, chopped ginger, some white pepper, and also salt and a little egg, okay? And I want to show you how easy it is to do this. First of all, we're gonna put this over here and marinate the meat. I said meat, that means you can use any meat. What kind of meat? I don't care. <laughs> and then, say chon pickle, okay? Water chestnut, give texture and flavor. Green onion, some chopped ginger, and then white pepper or black pepper, tiny bit of salt, very little, don't use too much. Some sesame seed oil, and of course, a tiny bit of soy sauce. And very important to put a tiny bit of Egg to give that binding property. Beat it up with your chopstick, okay? Now, then, of course, a tiny bit of cornstarch too, to bind it, to give a nice, smooth paste. And then I'm gonna show you how to shape this. And it's very easy to do. While I'm doing this, I'm heating up a wok with water, boiling water. So use it for steaming. Now, a lot of people know that when you steam, make sure do not use a well-seasoned wok to steam too much because they can get rusty because it kind of damage prolonged steaming in a seasoned carbon steel wok tend to destroy the seasoning. So it get rusty. Make sure to stir. If I were you, I would use five chopsticks and do it, okay? Much faster. We set this aside, and then we're gonna shape some meatball and coat it with this. And we will then put it over here, shape the meatball. You can use any motion. You can go like that, or you can go like that. You can go like that. It doesn't make any difference. <laughs> Depends on your mood. And then, after you finish, you can wash it. Your hand, so easier to shape the ball. See that? And then you roll it, one over here, you show Show you another one. <laughs> when you do this, as I said, I always have been telling people, you should not rush. Even people want to rush you, you said, ah, take it easy. <laughs> Once again, two. And I love to take my time because good food takes time to prepare. Once again, two. Now. If you're hungry, you shake big balls. If you're not as hungry, smaller balls, okay? <laughs> Depends on your diet requirement. And then you roll the whole thing up like this. Look at this. It actually shaped. This is another way to do it. Put some more over here, and you put it on both ends. You just shape it like this. 
this way is perfectly coated like this. Look at that. And you put it right here. You see this? I have some smaller ball for you and a big ball for me. <laughs> okay, very easy. I shape this whole thing and we are going to cover this up in this bamboo steamer. Now, in this case, you know why Chinese chefs like to use bamboo steamer? Because bamboo steamer allows the excess amount of steam to escape. So it's very little moisture condensed back to your steamer. When this is ready, you steam it for about 16 to 18 minutes until they're nice and done. You want to make sure the rice is also cooked. It takes about 16 to 18 minutes to cook because it's already soaked. When it's done, you take it out like that. And don't pick it up by your, with your hand. <laughs> I do it because I have no choice. And then you put it over here, and I want to show you. This is actually beautiful because I touch my hand with pork, so I don't want to do it. So I'm going to put it like this. And I use this finger on this side, put it like this. And I only put three. You know why? Three has a significant meaning in Chinese culture. Three is sam, is sang, means life. You normally don't use four pieces. Four pieces, is four means dead, so three. <laughs> now, of course, dim sum can also take the form of baked pastry. Now, of course, a lot of people don't realize baking is actually a very new entry into Chinese cuisine. In the old days, there's no baking, there's no pastry in China. They always do the dim sum by either steaming or deep frying or braising or wok stir fry or casserole to make a variety of dim sum. And only in the past couple hundred years, the baking and oven baking is introduced to China. But even nowadays, very few Chinese households has an oven at home. And then this particular one is this particular one I call this uh, beef, curry beef in a moon-shaped pastry. Very easy to do. Everybody can do it. Everybody know that you can do your pastry or you can buy the pastry dough, okay? Put some flour around here. Put some flour. In China, when they go out, they normally would go out to restaurants to order this kind of Dim sum or pastry. Make sure to move this. Okay, shape this. And then you can do about three or four. Make sure they are just thin enough, but not too thin. Okay, this is the pastry dough. We roll it out. After I roll it out, I want to show you what I have for filling. Okay, here I have some ground lean beef. I have some chopped onion, cilantro, ginger, curry powder, and a tiny bit of sichuan peppercorn, and water chestnut, and all the seasoning that I need to marinate it, okay? I have some soy sauce, I have some tiny bit of uh, oil, and I have some oyster sauce, and some rice wine, okay? And then I'm gonna cut this up, okay? One, and I cut this up, one, and I cut this up, and I cut another one up, and the rest, I am going to save it and keep it for myself for tomorrow. <laughs> save it. Chinese never throw anything away. I'm going to keep it and send it to my mother. Now, talking about recycle, we're going to recycle this for the next six months. And then this is what is interesting. After you do it, Mix them all together, and you have to marinate and stir fry it. After you stir fry it, you let it keep at room temperature or in the fridge until they cool down, and this is done. And then you fill this approximately one teaspoonful, okay? Another teaspoonful, okay? Another teaspoonful. And since we're talking about three, huh? we don't need this either. And then we put a tiny bit of water. Look at this, this is very easy to do. Everybody know how to do it. Look at that. We put this here, we put this here. Put a tiny bit of water, half moon shape. Okay? Do it with gentle care, with patience. As I said, 
you want to fold it and look nice. When it's done, you fold it over. Okay? Beautiful. Nice and fold it over like this. Look at that. One. And then fold it over. Two. Make sure, snap it off, snap it a little bit so it looks nice. Fold it. If you have too much, you got a problem. So don't get too carried away. <laughs> just put enough. And then you use a egg wash, okay? You just brush it a little bit and brush a little bit to give some nice color. And then you put it all back here so we are ready to go to our oven. One, two. And this is all for me and this is for you. <laughs> Always learn to take the time to clean up and don't make a mess. And we're gonna go to the oven. First, we'll bake this and then when you finish baking it, you take it out. It's instantly, it's very fast. <laughs> and you put it right here, it's beautiful. And when it's done, you serve it right here. And all I have is some beautiful pastry, which I would like to invite you to come to my kitchen and enjoy it. Now you can put it and garnish it any way you want. Three. And there's a beautiful curry beef. <laughs> Speaking of dim sum restaurant, let me show you what actually goes on behind the scene in one of Hong Kong's most popular dim sum houses, Harbour Village. Making dim sum is art in motion. It takes the eye of an artist and the patience of a saint. Here at Harbour Village Restaurant in Hong Kong, dim sum making is an around-the-clock effort. First, the chef pours a thin rice noodle paste onto this specially designed steamer over cheesecloth so that it won't stick. Now, he arranged the roast pork in neat rows like this. Cover and steam for just five minutes. Then you lace it carefully on the counter. Lift off the cheesecloth, fold the flat noodle sheet into neat thin rolls like this. making sure that the roast pork is sealing nice and tight. He cuts it up and serves it into two portions. Actually, they are both for me. I love this stuff. In China, we call that this ju cheng fen in Cantonese. I call it Chinese pig in a blanket. It's actually a steamed meat filled rice roll. The roll is made from the dough of long grain rice flour. The next one I want to show you is a fried and steamed dumpling. I call it the vegetarian pastica bun. You love pastica. Everybody loves pastica, but this is a very unique one to do it, okay? First, I want to show you the filling because you got to do the filling first. Okay, or you can do the dough first, then you do the filling. It makes no difference whatsoever to me. I don't think you care either. Here, um, these are all the basic filling, vegetarian, so there's no meat. I have some button mushroom, carrot, ginger, garlic, green onion, shiitake mushroom, donggu, dry mushroom, soak it, and then also chop up some bamboo shoot, garlic, some seasoning. I have some salt, white pepper, and sugar. Now, this is interesting. I want to show you this. This is a cabbage. When you go out to eat past sticker, this is the regular cabbage, the head cabbage. When you do that, you should put a tiny bit of salt. And you let the salt sit there, and you 
let us sit and kind of pick on it. But idea is to get rid of the leach out some of the, the water. And I want to show you that actually water, I want you to look at this, okay? Come on, look at this. Water coming out. See that? You do it for about 10 to 15 minutes. Look at that, the water. I hope you can see it, okay? Do it in the right place. Don't do it around here, okay? <laughs> because it is not appropriate. And then, when this is done, we're going to set this aside, and you stir fry everything, and you put it in the fridge until they cool down. This is the feeling. It's already cooked, okay? In the meantime, we're going to make the dough. You start it out with a wonderful, wonderful, regular, all-purpose flour, and mix it with some water, and then you shape it into a long cylindrical dough like that, and then you flatten this out, get some flour here, and then this is how the Chinese roll the dough. Look at this. You flatten this out like that. And then you use this Chinese rolling pin. Chinese rolling pin is a little bit smaller. And then you go on to this and you go, one, you see that? Two, you, you keep on moving it. You keep on moving it. You see this? Until you have perfect round dough. Perfect round dough like this. One, two, and three. Okay? And then when you have all of these, you are going to use a spoon and scoop this right here. Okay? This vegetarian dough. Vegetarian dough. In the meantime, I'm heating up a frying pan, just like I normally do my dough uh, with the, uh, and uh, frying my uh, pot sticker, okay? And you put it all together, and I'll show you another very interesting technique. You hold on to this carefully. You, this is how you shape it. I only want to shape one, so pay attention. Last and the first. You snap, put it over here. You snap it, okay. One, snap, push, snap, push, snap, push, snap, push, snap, push, push, snap, snap, push, push, snap, 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 snap. And you have a beautiful dough. Looks like this. Look at that. Isn't it cute? Now, just in case you miss, huh? No big deal. We'll do another one. But this one, fast. Fast. You see this? Very, very fast. You just do it like this. Just snap it, snap it, and you have a perfect dough like that. Look at that. And then when it's done, you brown it in this frying pan. Just like pot sticker. You brown it, you brown it. Until they're brown, you cover this up and put some. Normally, it takes about a minute and a half to brown it. Put some. Wow. Heat it up and you cover up and steam it. After you're done with that, you know what? Let's once again clean up. This way we do not have to worry about anything later. And then you know what? You can take it out and you can serve these. This is a beautiful dough. Look at this. One. Two. Look at that. Brown on one side. And then you continue to put this, and this is a vegetarian pot sticker bun. <laughs> a traditional dim sum lunch sometimes end with a delicate pastry filled with sweet fillings. We call it lotus manju. It's basically a glutinous or short grain rice flour dough, sweet rice flour dough, cook it and fill all kind of bean paste and lotus sweet bean paste inside. Let me show you how interesting it is. You open it up, they look like this is, uh, you can use red bean paste sweet or lotus bean paste, okay? And you have to kind of get used to it because it's got a very interesting texture. Now, everybody go to Japanese restaurant and they love sushi. And this is a very interesting way to do it. Every culture has its version of the dim sum. This is cooked long grain rice. Look at that. Cooked long grain, oh no, sorry. Medium grain rice. If you use long grain rice, they won't stick. Then will be falling apart sushi. And then you put some mushroom, chopped mushroom, shiitake, some Chinese long beans to give color, and also some nice chopped carrot. And mix them up if you want. You can put a tiny bit of black sesame seed. Mix it up. This is how they mix sushi, okay? You cook the rice, medium grain rice, and then you use some rice vinegar mixed with a tiny bit of sugar. You just kind of 
put it in. While you're doing that, you fan it until the rice is nice and cold. And then you mix it all up like this. Mix it nice and colorful. And then you can sh kind of shape it in any way you want, just like a rice ball. Uh, they do that in China often time, as I said earlier. Every single culture have the different version of dim sum. Tapas in Spain, antipasto in Italy, and of course, sushi in Japan. Let me show you this, a very interesting inari sushi. Inari, what is inari? Inari is this. Let me get rid of these so everybody can see. Inari is this, you can buy them in a can, and they're actually deep fried tofu, okay? You put it in, there's a little pocket when you open it up. All you have to do is shape this, okay? Shape this, and then shape it into a ball. When you shape this, it's very important to make sure you shape it with a tiny bit of water with your, in your hand. You shape this like this, you see this? It's just a very interesting way to shape this. And then when it's done, you shape it into a nice mold like that. And then you gotta wash your hand. Normally, you should have a bowl of water right next to you so you don't have to run around all over the place, okay? And then the other thing you can do is you can buy little sushi mold like this, any shape, okay? And you can fill it up, look at that. You just fill it up, fill it up, fill it up. You can have all kind of mold. You just push the whole thing in, <laughs> okay? It's very easy to do and be creative all the time. Just press it and the whole thing comes out. And then when you are ready, all you have to do, <laughs> the wrong direction again. <laughs> Make sure you put, oh, this is very in interesting, okay? Push it, push it, look at this. You just push the whole thing out. Push the whole thing out like that. You see this? Then you have one shape like this, another shape like this, another shape like this. If you don't have any of this shape, you just buy, get one of these little bowls and you just scoop the whole thing, okay? Then you can make your own and all you have to just come out like this. As simple as that. Now, of course, sushi chef never make a mess like this. <laughs> the reason I make a mess is because I drink the water. I'm supposed to wash my hand, <laughs> you know? And also, when this is ready, let me show you. We can actually make this look beautiful. Look at that. And it's a different shape and different color. And then if you want, you can shape them and put a tiny, tiny bit of black sesame seed. And you know, you always serve with chopstick. Now, a lot of people don't realize Japan is the chopstick capital of the world, particularly for disposable chopstick. In fact, half of the chopstick, disposable chopstick is used in Japan. If you add them all together, snap it off end by end, they will last for about, stretch about two and a half million miles. So when you eat that, you can use your hand or you can use your chopstick and pick it up like that. And this is the wonderful Inori Sushi. <laughs> you know, dim sum is a wonderful way to eat because you can try all kinds of flavors and texture and shape and size, and you can make everything in advance and just heat it up right before your guests arrive. Or even easier, just make a reservation at your nearest tea house. <laughs> Till next time, try some dim sum and then some more. Until next time, if Yang can cook, so can you. Jia <laughs>